numbers. What are they? For millennia, man has tried to answer this question. Numbers exist in the world around us, which led us to algebra. It took thousands of years more to then realize that math could describe a world that did not exist around us. A world beyond our human comprehension. You've probably seen the Mandelbrot set at least once in your life, or at least heard of a fractal. But what exactly is it? What does it mean? Today, I'm planning to answer that question, starting from the ground up. begins with a mathematician called Bernois Mandelbrot, and he was studying iterative functions. Let's begin with a very easy example. f of z is equal to z plus 1. This is to say, every single time we evaluate this function, we will then plug it in as the parameter and evaluate it again. You could also just think of it as z of the n plus 1 is just equal to z of the n plus 1. Let's start with z equals 0. So f of 0 is equal to, plugging in 0 for z, 0 plus 1. That equals 1. Now we will evaluate f of 1. Plug that in for z again, 1 plus 1 is 2. Now we will evaluate f of 2. The pattern is I evaluate the function and then I plug it in and evaluate the function again. f of 2 is 2 plus 1 equals 3, etc. This one is quite easy to see the pattern, it's just increasing by 1 each time. I'd made this 1 instead maybe a plus 2, then it would increase by 2 each time. 3 would be a 3 increase, and so on. Another way we could write this function is just f of z is equal to z plus c, c being some constant. Seems simple enough, right? Mandelbrot, however, took this one step further. The function that Mandelbrot is studying as f of z is equal to z squared plus c. Once again, let's just choose the easiest example and let's say c is equal to 1. So f of 0 is equal to 0 squared plus 1, which is 1. f of 1 is equal to 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. f of 2 is equal to 2 squared plus 1, which is 5 f of 5 is equal to 5 squared plus 1, and this is 26. It should be pretty obvious that this time it is just going to quickly spiral out of control and diverge to infinity. But now let's try plugging in negative 2. f of 0 is equal to 0 squared minus 2 this time, which is equal to negative 2. f of negative 2 is equal to negative 2 squared minus 2 is just positive 2. f of 2 is equal to 2 squared minus 2, which is 2. Wait, this will just continuously get 2, plug in f of 2, get 2 again, and it will repeat this for infinity. That means that negative 2 is on the boundary of the Mandelbrot set. I've drawn a number line to illustrate this concept. Negative 2 is the largest magnitude number that you can stray away from 0 such that it does not just diverge to infinity. If you don't believe me, let's try plugging in negative 2.1. As you can see here, when we use negative 2.1 for c, we go from negative 2.1, 2.41, 3.81, 12.5, and then we'll just keep getting exponentially greater. So we know that the Mandelbrot set is bounded by negative 2. If you're curious what the positive boundary is, is actually 1 fourth, and this is actually not as intuitive. When you plug in 1 fourth for c, then you will just keep getting a number that is closer and closer to 1 half, but never quite there. Anything greater than 1 fourth, and we will spiral off into infinity. We can draw a bit of a shaded region connecting them, showing that the Mandelbrot set for real numbers is all the numbers between negative 2 and positive 1 fourth. Some people would have stopped there, but what happens next is about to get a little bit more complex. If you don't know what imaginary numbers are, it's okay, I'll run through them really quickly. So the square root function. The square root function tells me a number 
times itself that will give me my number under the radical. So, for example, if I had the square root of 4, that is telling me that since 2 times itself is 4, the square root of 4 is 2. But what if we had something like the square root of a negative 4? Can you tell me, can you tell me a number multiplied by itself that will give you negative 4? You can't. And that's because that there are no real numbers that fulfill this. If I plugged in negative 2, well, negative 2 times negative 2 is just positive 4. If I just asked you what is the square root of negative 1, what would you tell me? The answer is that there is no real number that can be expressed by this. So instead, we see that the square root of negative 1 is i. i is an imaginary number. Now if I ask you again what the square root of negative 4 is, you could tell me that it is 2i times 2i. To make this a little bit easier to look at, I'll separate out the 2s and the i's. 2 times 2 is 4, of course, and i times i, well, we just described that i times itself is negative 1. This imaginary number i is so crucial in so many mathematical concepts. So Mandelbrot wanted to include imaginary numbers as well in his analysis of this function. Let's try plugging in i for c. Once again, we start with f of 0, and that is equal to 0 squared plus i, which is equal to i. f of i is equal to i squared plus i, and we just defined i squared as negative 1, so this is equal to negative 1 plus i. When we get to f of negative 1 plus i, however, things get a bit more complicated. We can't add or subtract real and imaginary numbers, so we will actually have to bring this down and FOIL it out. So here we get that negative 1 plus i squared is equal to negative 2i, and negative 2i plus i is negative i. Iterations will only get more complicated by hand, so I'll stop here. And I'll also tell you that i is actually not included in the Mandelbrot set. This function here will spiral off to infinity. We can set up an imaginary number line here, and I will just tell you that the highest and lowest bounds are roughly 0.6 and negative 0.6. Many more mathematicians would have stopped there. We've defined it for all real numbers and all imaginary numbers. However, there's still one more set of numbers that we haven't looked at yet, and these are complex numbers. Complex numbers have a real and non-real component. This could be something as easy as 1 plus i, or 6 plus 9i. If we let c be any complex number, then that includes any real, non-real, or combination of the two. Someone on Reddit told me roughly negative 0.2 plus 1.12i is actually included in the Mandelbrot set, but where do we put this on the number line? We can't put it here because it also has a negative 0.2. If only there is some way to view real and non-real numbers at the same time. Introducing the complex plane. Real numbers across the horizontal axis, non-real numbers across the vertical axis. I can define any complex number I want by simply placing a point. This could be something like 1 plus i, since we move out one real number and also up i non-real numbers. Finally, we have the tools we need to graph the Mandelbrot set. This is actually just the set of all c's such that it does not spiral off into infinity. The Mandelbrot set is a fractal, so I can't possibly draw all of it here, but there are several large components of it. We have the main cardioid making up most of its area, and there's also a very, very thin spike going out all the way to negative 2, since, as you remember, we defined negative 2 as the smallest real number you can use, and one-fourth as the largest positive number you can use. Here we have our bounds from before about 0.6 and negative 0.6i, but then there are an infinite number of strange disjointed tendrils and other shapes across this. As you zoom in on these, you will find that they are not smooth as you zoom in, but only infinitely more complicated. There's even more to unpack, but that's more than I can fit in this video. It is also crucial in understanding what is my favorite math YouTube video of all time. I suggest checking it out if you have a second. You think about fundamental shapes of the universe, the circle, the equilateral triangle, but maybe this is one as well. We might be just beginning to understand the universe, and this, our key to it.